Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, this is uh, Premier Chess um, Fall 2021 class. This is the Adult Intermediate, and this is week 11, the final week. Can't believe it. Um, so, so, yeah, so this is the final week. Uh, maybe we'll go over um, a couple of games because Samuel, you played in the tournament, right? On, um, on Sunday, right? Yeah, yeah that I was, did. You did great. Let's see. Let's see. Ooh, you, you you lost only to uh, Giant Guga. You know you know who that that guy is, right? Did I tell you? Gary. Oh, you know Gary? No, I don't. You don't know him. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, he's really good. Uh, so you're 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 13 years old, right, uh, Samuel? Yeah. Yeah, I think Gary is the same age as you, and uh, he's very strong. Yeah, he's pretty strong. He's like he's like a 2200 NM already, and. Um, yeah so yeah he actually beat me too uh we went over that game in the last class um so maybe we'll go over some of your games this class why not all right so before that though let's do a puzzle here um so this is a puzzle from leeches so both of these players are 2500 so a nice uh strong um game here so let's go back to the beginning so, all right, d4, knight f6, c4, g6. Um, okay, g3. So I think this is called the King's Indian defense, right? Am I right with that? I'm not that versed with all the openings, right? What do you guys think? Does that sound right? Yeah. I think so. All right, g3, c6, knight f3. Bishop g7, bishop g2, okay. So, Fianchettoing both bishops, okay. Good move, good idea. Castle, castle, d5. Um, queen b3, hmm. All right. I mean, I would, I would like, I would prefer just a natural developing move, knight c3. So, why do you think, why do you think he did queen b3? Let me ask you guys that. Why did white do queen b3? Any ideas? I guess the bishop can't leave the C8 square then. Yeah, so I think he's trying to make um, development difficult. Yeah, because the bishop definitely, I think, wants to come to F5 and exert control over his diagonal. And now that would just hang the B, uh, the B7 pawn. So yeah, I think that's one reason. All right, so queen a5, h3. All right, d takes. So now white is uh, basically forced to get off the b file and uh, recapture. <clears throat> now he can move the bishop, b, bishop b6, queen e2, knight b to d7. Okay, knight c3, c5. All right, takes, takes. All right, so now white is threatening up maybe some kind of discovery here. So uh, black gets out of the way. Queen a6, knight d4. Okay, that's a good move, opening up the bishop, also protecting uh, additional protection to e2. All right, uh, bishop d7, a4, rook a to c8, rook f to c1, rook f to d8 b4 okay so now knight takes okay so this is the puzzle so what do you guys think um this is uh white to move what is the best move for white here what do you think B5. B5. So why B5? Um, to cut up 
the bishop's connection to the right knight. very nice yeah cut off the bishop's connection at the same time as attacking the queen right so very useful move and uh and if the queen just moves let's say queen b6 and we just take the knight and white is just up a free knight right so yeah very nice move um let's see is there anything better i think that's the i think that's the strongest move here let's see yeah nice all right so now what would you play here bishop takes I play the knight on D. Yeah, Takes I think so. Right, I think so. So knight D to uh, B5. Ooh, and it continues. All right, knight takes C3. Okay, so what do you think? Way to move. Ways to move. I think he has to take with either the knight or the bishop because if he doesn't, the knight comes down and forks the rook and the king, and the other, the black rook, is attacking the queen. Right, so right. He's having three pieces attacked at the same time. Right, right. So knight takes e2 would be a pretty strong move. So what do you think? Best move for white here. Your knight moves back and takes the c3 knight. I think so. I think just coming yeah, back and, and uh, removing all that nonsense and, um, you know, a simple move. Like, like I think rook takes, rook takes a6 would kind of invite complications, you know, and I think just knight takes, simple knight takes c3 avoids all those complications, all right? What do you guys think? Does everyone agree with that? Right, because if bishop takes, then this knight is just lost, and um, and yeah, so so knight takes c3, and now uh, white is just up a minor piece, and he's attacking the queen here, right? So, all right, so knight takes, let's see, yeah, nice, good job, guys. All right, all right, so let's see, um, let's see this, uh, the tournament. So, so we went over, uh, a couple of the other students from the other class. So, so let's see Spike Kids games. Let's see what went on here. All right. All right. So, yeah, I think we'll definitely look at this one. This was a great game. How'd you feel playing him, uh, Samuel? Uh, he was pretty good. He's pretty, pretty good. <laughs> yeah, he's very good. Ah, you both berserked, I see. Oh, no. Oh, wait a minute. No, I didn't. Oh, you didn't berserk. So why is it starting at 2.30? That's weird. All right, let's see. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. You, yeah, you didn't berserk. Right. All right. Yeah, you, you never berserk, right, Samuel? Very, very rarely. Yeah. All right. All right, so D, E4, E5. Okay. Knight F3, Knight C6, Bishop C4, Bishop C5, D4. Ooh, interesting. Huh. What's that about? So that kind of... See, I'm not really that, that versed with the e pawn opening because I never play these openings, but um, is this like... Uh, is this called like the Scotch Gambit or something? I, I forget. Um, I think... Right? Um, I think... Yeah, go ahead. I think so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so the idea, I guess, is to... To gambit a pawn and, and and gain a quick attack, maybe something like this. Um, all right, so let's see. Takes c3. Ah, okay. So if you took again, I guess that would be the scotch gambit, maybe something like that. C3, d6. Okay. See, I wouldn't I wouldn't allow him to take with the pawn here. So now now he just he just kind of repaired his center, and 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 he repaired his center with tempo. So I would I would suggest. Uh, something like d3, right? Because now you're giving back the pawn on your own terms, okay? So now he can take the pawn here. And the other nice thing is that c3 move is temporarily blocking his knight from coming to a very useful square, right? So 
So I think D uh, D three kind of you know throws a wrench into his plans, right? Is there any reason that you didn't play uh, D three, uh, Samuel? Yeah. What was the reason? Um. Well, I didn't really consider that. Oh, you didn't consider it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Usually, I would do that uh, in these kind of cases. So, is everybody here some, uh, um, um, aware of the Smith Mora Gambit? I've heard of it. <laughs> you know? Okay, I'll just. I'll I don't just think go... I've ever played it. All right, I'll go over the Smith Mora Gambit. So this is the Smith Mora. It's the Sicilian defense. C four, uh, knight here, and then maybe let's say, let's say knight goes here. So it's very similar to what we just saw. So D four takes, and now and now white offers another pawn here, right? And so the idea is after takes, and knight takes. Now now look at this activity. White has great activity, right? With all of his pieces, black has only one knight developed and white usually develops a pretty strong attack after that. Um, so, so yeah, so in this case, again, I would do the exact same thing. I would play D, D3, right? And, uh, and then white would have to use up another tempo uh, if he really wants to put his knight on C3. So again, you know, try to make it difficult for your opponent to achieve his goals, you know, his aims. All right. So very similar uh, strategy for Smith Moore again, but I would do in this kind of opening. All right. Does that make sense, Samuel? Or, or, or would you still allow him to do it or take care? What do you think? That, that's... No, I'd, so I'd go D3. Right. Does D3 make sense to you? Yeah. Yeah. It makes sense to me. Okay. All right, so D6, C takes. Yeah, so now he's got a beautiful pawn center uh, that, you, that you gave him. Bishop B4 check, knight C3, knight F6, castle, castle, queen D3. Actually, you know what? Let me, let me just go back one moment. I just want to see what the computer recommends here. Let's see. Hold on. Let's go back one more. Ooh, the computer doesn't even recommend D3. That's interesting. All right, all right, all right. All right, so let's continue. Castle, queen d3, h6, a3, bishop takes, takes, okay. Bishop g4, h3. Hmm, you took here. Why'd you do that? Just curious. Why would you Why would you take there? Um, on f3? Yeah, why'd you take f3? Oh, um, after he... Um, took on f3 back mm -hmm. i was thinking of pressuring the e4 pawn a bit with 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 rookie eight yeah or queen e7 okay um i mean i think this bishop is more useful if you drop it back and then you drop it back to g3 and i think it's pretty useful in this diagonal actually and then you can hide away over here on h7 uh and and you can also pressure the pawn from this diagonal right so yeah, I think so. All right. So bishop takes, queen takes, rook e8, bishop d3, queen e7, rook e1. Yeah, so this is, um, I, think, I think white has a slight advantage. So look at the computer. Computer gives uh, white, even though you guys are materially equal, uh, just probably just because white has a, the, the, the bishop pair. So white has a three pawn advantage, right? So Already, amazingly, the computer gives white like three pawns of advantage just for having the bishop pair, it seems. Um, yeah. All right. So, yeah. So now it just seems like you're kind of waiting for him to do something, for, for him to break through, right? So I'm just curious. Let's just go back for a minute. Um, what if you went back? Let's see what the advantage the computer gives. All right. All right. So, the, so, so it's closer to equality right? If you didn't trade this knight for the bishop, right? Closer to equality. It does give him one, one, uh, one point advantage, probably because he's got such a strong control over the center, maybe. Um, yeah. All right. Let's go back. All right. All right. So rook a2. So he's, he's very carefully improving his position now. All right. Ooh, yeah. Okay. So a little tactic there. So this knight, this knight is protected only by the knight, uh, the pawn. So he, so he removes it with the bishop. Okay. 
Yeah. All right, so now you're down a pawn. All right, take, take. Okay, so now, so now what's the advantage? Now, now you just, black is down a pawn, okay. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'm thinking about maybe pushing here or maybe taking the, the pawn and then and then claiming the C file for the rook. That might be an interesting idea. Um so why did you okay? Did you come back because you wanted to attack this the, the D pawn, put more pressure on the D4 pawn? Yes, and try to provoke d5. Provoke d5, maybe. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. So let's say d5, knight e5, bishop e2. All right. Hmm. All right. So the light squares are definitely weak in black position here. Yeah. All right. All right, that's a good that's a good move. Rook g three. I like that. Activating the rook. So now, so now um, these doubled these doubled rooks are basically um, uh, rendered inert because the knight and the rook are doing a good job here. So no breakthrough. I think th this is this is the point where I started watching your game, and uh, I think you had a pretty good position because even though it looks like these rooks are pretty powerful, your rook is really um, coming from the inside and kind of infiltrating everything and picking away these weak pawns, right? You think you were doing a really good job here. So you're down, uh, you're down what? Two pawns, right? Six, no, one pawn, right? You're only down one pawn. Yeah. Six, yeah. But but this rook is doing a great job. Like it's gonna, you're gonna pick off this pawn, this pawn. And, and what can you do? He can't really do anything, you know? Okay, so, so okay, so that was a mistake. So as a computer gives, Rook comes down here, um, and then after king here. Ah, ah, it's an interesting move. All right, so now what's white's best move? What do you think? What's white's best move here? Here? Yep. So white to move. What do, um, what do you guys think? I'm not sure here, but if white pushes the pawn to e4, he's giving up a pawn, but it kind of you mean oh pawn you mean you mean, you mean you mean e5. E5, yeah, e5. Yeah. All right. So yeah, and, that that looks like an excellent move. Um why? Well that, that's it, a great move. Black ha has to take that pawn. Okay, with what? With what? Um I don't think it really matters. No, it does matter. I'm not sure. Oh, it does matter. Oh, yeah. What do you think? Cast takes the F pawn because he takes it to the D pawn. He'll push the pawn and fork the rook and the king. Right, right. So, so it takes with the F pawn. And now, yeah, just what Rayhan said, if he takes here, and now we have a fork, right? Very, very nice fork. This rook is running out of, of safe squares. So, so, so really, um, this pawn cannot take. So maybe his best bet is to kind of protect it this way. And then what would, um, what would White's best move be now? Rook E1. Um, rook E1. No. I think white's best move is just to, just to take here. So now the pawn is no longer protected, right? Now he takes here, check, and maybe now, um, let's see, maybe now we go, yeah, maybe now you just push. 
yeah now now uh this is this pawn is becoming very dangerous right so yeah so here um yeah, rook b rook b6 would look like, it looks like it's a winning move. Yeah, rook b6 is, is a winning move because this bishop is doing an excellent job of controlling the light squares. So the, the light squares are very weak uh, in Samuel's position. All right. So he went rook e2. And so now Samuel begins to pick off his pawns. Rook takes. Rook takes. So now after that, let's see, five pawns. So now Samuel's winning by a pawn now. All right. Now that's given as a question mark. Interesting. So now Samuel, look at this. You have, you actually have advantage now. You have you have a lot about a pawn advantage. It's pretty pretty good. You know, you're doing pretty I, good here. I kind of messed this one up. Yeah, you you're doing really good. F takes, F takes, uh, D takes. Um, yeah, here. Yeah, here I was looking at at this position, and White took back immediately. He took back immediately on, uh, you know, he did the pre-move on, on rook takes, but I think that was the, that was a mistake right here. I, I think I saw this when I looked at this position. Uh, you couldn't take this pawn because now this pawn is free to move forward. And now you're only, you're only uh, well, actually, no, you do have this move. But, but yeah, if you were to go rook c6, what would, um, what would white's best move be here? Well, bishop be four. Yeah, yeah. Bishop. Bishop, bishop d7 bishop d7 yeah bishop d7 skewering the two rooks right and that would be really annoying really nice move so so yeah but yeah he moved too quick and and i mean he berserked you know he's a he's a little bit a little bit cocky <laughs> a little bit cocky he's berserking against against uh you who's a 2000 player so he's uh, he's pretty confident <laughs> does it does it like uh like how does it how does it feel samuel when someone berserks against you like do you feel like um um how do you say like uh, like on edge or nervous when somebody does that no especially i'm pretty, I'm pretty glad to see others berserk are you glad to see it <laughs> okay all right so yeah so he takes so he went rook takes rook d4 okay all right, so what was a better move? Let's see. All right, yeah, maybe there. Mm, okay, so so yeah, so you could have won this pawn. Rook D four, Rook D four. Okay, so now yeah, that was a mistake. Now yeah, I saw this. I saw this when I was watching this game. I saw this that 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 now your best move is Knight F seven, and you missed that. Oh, you missed that, Samuel, because now this Rook has to move, and you win the Knight. And you win this this very dangerous pawn right here. Right. Oh yeah, uh, I totally missed that, and yeah, that was, and I just lost completely. Yeah, you're doing good here. You're doing good. So just knight up oh, there, Sean. So just knight, knight c, knight f7, and now this rook has to move, and once this pawn is off the board, now look at this. This is such an easy game, such an easy win for you, right? What do you think? This is a very easy win, right? He's got two pawns left. You have four pawns, and these are all connected. You just need to push these down and and claim victory. You know, and you got you got both rooks here supporting them the whole way. Um, yeah, right? What do you think? Make sense? Yeah, knight f7. Yeah, it does. Yeah, knight f7, I think, is the winning move here. Um, so, yeah, so here it gives you three pawn advantage right now. Three pawns, right? So after knight f7... Uh, okay, so he's still about three pawns. And yeah, yeah, still advantage. All right, so let's go back. So you went you went B uh, B5, which is logical. Okay, so now now Knight C7 doesn't work as strong because he's got to check down here. So yeah, so Knight F7 check and now he can he can defend it this way. All right, so let's go back. So you went knight, you went knight b7. Yeah, I was looking at knight f7. I think that was the strongest, the stronger move because not only does it prevent the pawn from advancing, but it also protects the uh, the h6 pawn, right? Uh, so dual function there. <clears throat> also, the king can now um, the king can now um, hide behind the knight. So your knight eventually got lost 
because of this move. Um, yeah. Yeah. I right. Lost. Yeah. Check. Yeah. yeah. All over. Yeah. There you go. Ah. Yeah. So so I think here your best move is probably king f7. Right. Stay close to the e7 square. And and what can he do? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it looks like this pawn is about to be lost. And um, yeah, what can he do? I mean, he's gotta he's gotta drop back and protect it, right? He can't he can't give you a check because now he loses a rook, right? He can't even push the pawn because you, you it's gonna be gone, right? So king f7 again. Maybe that's still that's still winning for you. Let's see what the computer says. Okay, okay. So all right, so he's saying here rook eight, h eight. All right. Um, yeah, that's, that's threatening the skewer here. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, this was so close. Oh man. It would have been nice. Would have been nice if you beat him. <laughs> have you ever beat him? No, sadly. No, uh, this was a great opportunity. All right. So rookie eight and ouch. Yeah. Check, check. Ooh. All right. Check. Picked off that one. Yeah. And here he does the same thing that he did to me. <laughs> he, he did a pawn checkmate. <laughs> checkmate with him. I missed that totally. You missed that one? <laughs> yeah, he did the same thing to me in the, in the tournament. Um, pawn checkmate. But yeah, great game. That was a good game. Um, all right. So let's um, let's see. You, you guys, I got I got like a master game. Uh, that we can go over or do you just want to do you want to finish off the, the class with some puzzles a couple more puzzles what do you guys think um, i'd like a master game yeah all right all right we can do a master game let's do this all right so all right sean, sean is this your first uh time doing the adult classes or did you do it before with, with me no this is my first time first time okay all right, so I don't think you did this then with me. Okay, so this is a game between Jeremy Silman and uh, Formanek, uh, 1989 World Open. All right, so Silman is white. Um, and uh, okay, so from this position, how would, so, so looking at this position, like how would you assess, uh, how would you assess white's position and how would you assess black's position? What do you guys think? White's kind of cramped. Uh, okay, okay. Actually, that's, that's a good question. Who is more cramped, white or black here? No, I guess black has got it a little worse. Yeah, black is yeah. definitely worse, right? So white has a pawn on, on uh, black's territory, which is removing both um, E6 right. and C6 from, from black. Um, and this bishop doesn't have that much scope. Even though it is, you you would say strictly speaking, it's a good bishop, but still it doesn't have much scope. Um, so yeah, all right. So now, so white, yeah, white is definitely a little bit freer of a position. Okay, so you're playing white. So white to move. What what course of action would you do for white? What 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 do you think would be the uh, a move that you would consider? Well, knight to b five to threaten b six. Okay, so knight b5, okay, direct threat against, against d6. Okay, after queen e7, how would you follow up? Because you know that you know that a6 is coming. What about white playing the bishop on c1 out to g5? C1 to g5. Um, okay. Maybe just, just to get it out. Pinning the knight, that's true. It does pin the knight. Uh, maybe a h6 and uh, maybe drop it back, right? You wouldn't trade. What do you think? Would you I trade? Think you trade because you don't want to alleviate any of the pressure. Like you said, right. Black's cramped. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Off. When your opponent is cramped, you don't want to make trades because that will benefit the person who's cramped, right? So you want to maintain as many pieces on the board as possible, right? Um, and then after maybe he can break the pin with queen c7, and now here you can see the knight the knight has this possibility of jumping over here. So that is, that is one idea. All right, so what else? So, so white didn't do either of those. What else do you think uh, white could play here?
It might open up their position, but like F four to get your rook into the game and then move your queen over so you can like that's okay. make an attack on. So F four F four is good idea in the sense that you want to open up the position, but, but does on F four end up clearing the uh, E five square for Black's knight? Yes, exactly. So so now again we're with trades. Um, F ta uh, E takes F four, and now the knight is a little bit freer and can jump here. And now look now now bl Black is feeling a little bit better. So if if of course if Black takes here, he'll feel even better, right? Now now this knight maybe can reroute to to D six. And exert pressure on these uh, on these pawns C4 and E4, and and then and now Black yeah Black's game is definitely freer. So again, we don't necessarily want to make Black's life easier. So what else? How do we how do we make progress but not make Black's life easier? <laughs> Would it make any sense to push the A pawn? No. A pawn. Uh... I don't think so. Um, I was like pushing the B pawn. Uh, oh, pushing the B pawn. Um, Again, you open up that square for Black's Knight. You open up C5. Uh, well, actually, no, not in this case. Oh, no, you're right, because you retake yeah. the pawn. Oops, oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You take it back, and, and you still can't jump there. Um, okay, so B4, I mean, I mean, that's a move that I would consider. I think that's a good move. Nothing wrong with but, it. But also, after you do that, don't you? Doesn't he now have a new target on C four? Your pawn on C four is weaker. That's true. That's true. He, you can say that there's a target there. Isn't um, there also A five after this? Uh, A five here. Yeah. Um. Hmm. Possibility. Yeah. Maybe here. I would. I would now. I would like to do knight B five because now there's no A six kicking away your knight. Right. right. So now your knight has a beautiful outpost here. And uh, attacking the weak uh, d6 pawn, so that's pretty nice. All right, so let's go back. So he didn't do b4 either. So what else? Maybe H3. 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 What's H3, the purpose? The of doing G5 and then G6, harass the knight and start the attack on the king. G4 and G5. Um. Okay. Interesting idea. Um. Yeah. I mean, it. So. So definitely. So we look at this position. The center is cramped and blocked, right? So that means that we have to shift our our perspective to the flanks, right? King side or or the queen side. So. Yeah, I think that um, in this case, um, yeah, there's more potential for for kingside activity than queenside, right? So, so in this case, um, you're kind of correct, uh, but he didn't do h3; he went g3. Hmm. So why g3? Maybe to prevent the knight on f6 from ever getting over to f4. Um, okay, yeah, that does prevent that. True, but again, also he does want to play f4, but he wants to replace it with another pawn so the knight ah. can't plant itself. So just on. like the b5 move, except doing it on the king side. So right. Yeah. He still covers the square. Right. Similar. Yeah. Similar idea. Yeah. So yeah, you want to make sure you don't give. You know, as you're advancing, as you're increasing space, you don't want to uh, give squares to your opponent if you can avoid it. Right. So uh, g3, knight e8. So maybe he wants to um, expand with uh, f4, f5 eventually, maybe g3, uh, g6, and f5 maybe. All right, so let's see. So f4, queen e7. All right, so it says white enjoys substantial kingside space advantage and the, and the half open. Uh, yeah, so, so, so yeah, so, um, all right, so queen e7. Um, and if, if uh, let, let, let's, say, let's say if the capture happened, e takes, G takes F5, right? If that happened, E takes knight E to F6 and king H1. So now, so now the, uh, the bishop is blocked. So now the attention shifts over to the G file and trying to put pressure on the, on the G7 pawn. Okay. All right. So that's one variation. So F4, queen E7. So what do you think white did here? White to move. 
what did white do here? Did he just do F, F5? Yeah, that's what I'm looking at, F5. Yeah, he just gained space. Yeah, exactly. So this, this whole game revolves around space advantage, right? <laughs> so gaining space um, slowly but surely and removing useful squares for your opponent. So F5, very nice. And then F6. So now, so now Black's, uh, Black's game is very <laughs> getting very cramped indeed, right? F5, F6. Okay, so now white to move. How would you continue? Would you go G4? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, keep pushing. Yeah, G4. White definitely has uh, the space advantage, right? So the thing, the thing when you have a space advantage and your opponent's cramped, you know, you can take your time, right? Because there's no rush at all. <laughs> your opponent is just shuffling his pieces around. So you should really um, take your time and make the breakthrough only when it benefits you, right? So, so no need to rush at all. Uh, so G4, okay. Uh, G5, he tries to block a little bit. Okay, so now what do you think White did here? Maybe Queen to F2 uh, to support pushing H2 to H4. H4, yeah. Yeah, that's a good move, but but in this case, he went H4 immediately. Ah, okay. All right, so so yeah, so if, if the pawn takes, you know, he can, I, he can he can win it back fairly easily. Get it back anyway. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no problem. So H4, H6. All right, so now white to move. What do you think? What did white do here? Brought the queen to h2 right away. So yeah, that's a good move, queen h2. So why did you not do h5? Uh, because that it's locks the whole... Man. Yeah, that just blocks everything. Now it's all locked up, and now and now the king is actually happy. <laughs> now the attention shifts to the queen side, right? So so yeah, if you leave the h pawn here, there's the constant threat of opening up the h file, right? So so white prepares. You could have gone queen h two, but he prepares instead with king f two. So he wants to bring the rook over instead. Um, so then we have knight c seven. Okay, then we have rook h one. <clears throat> Okay, rook f7. So black anticipates the opening of the h file. Uh, so swing the rook over to h7. Um, so so yeah, again, white is just taking his time. This is this is a this is such an important idea to understand. Do not rush the attack, right? When you have the space advantage, there is no need to rush. So take your time, improve your position, and and open the game only when it benefits you. All right. So bishop b3. So connecting the rooks. <clears throat> All right, rook h7. Now he begins to double. Rook h3, king g7, doubling, doubling. Okay, so now, so now, of course, black would love it. He would absolutely love it if white takes here. Do you think he's going to take there? <laughs> no, he's not, of course. <laughs> so rook h8 to h8. <clears throat> so what do you think, what do you think um, white did here? Maybe bring his knight over. Start bringing the knight over, bringing more troops. Okay, so so knight to where? So knight to uh, e two. Yeah, exactly. Knight, knight e two. So so the question you have to ask yourself in these kind of positions is, um, which of my pieces is not is not at its best square, right? Which which piece can be improved, right? So we got the rooks here doubled on the h file. Very nice, uh, ready to to uh, rain down on the h file. The bishop here is pretty good position. Uh, I mean, our bishop on d3, not such a good position. It could be better. But for now, he wants to improve his knight. So he brings his knight to h e2. And what's the goal? Why knight e2? Well, then g3. <clears throat> right, exactly. Yeah, so these are the kind of positions where knights reign supreme, right? Knight g3, knight h5, and, and that's a nice square for the knight. Beautiful, right? So knight e2, king g8, knight g3, knight e8. And now, now he shifts his attack on the queen side. So, so for the, the, the past couple of moves, 
white has been uh, bringing up his forces on the, on the king side and black is responding by doing the exact same thing. So now the difference with white and black here is, is white is much more, since white has more space, white is more nimble and can transfer easily his, 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 uh, his pieces to the queen side. Whereas look at black, do you think black can transfer his pieces to the queen side? No, <laughs> not so much at all, right? So this is another interesting idea is once you got all your opponent's pieces locked up, uh, focused on one thing, then you quickly change and you go to the other side. It's kind of like a like a chess sleight of hand, right? <laughs> so very nice. <clears throat> so 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 90, 90, uh, knight f8. All right. So so maybe opening up the seventh rank so he can sh shift his rooks. Okay, queen d2. All right. So now maybe he wants to reroute this bishop. So he brings the queen onto the dark square, and now the bishop needs to be improved. So queen d2. Bishop c8, perhaps preparing for something to happen on the queen side, because he knows that white will probably not want to do uh, capture on g5. So bishop c2, where do you think the bishop set it now? To a4. Right, a4. And to control this entire diagonal and perhaps plant itself on, um, on uh, c6, right? So that would be a nice move. Bishop c2. Queen d7. Um, so now he kind of does a waiting move. Bishop b3. Queen e7. And now we finally have bishop a4. Uh, now he claims a diagonal. Okay. And now uh, white, black opposes him. So what do you think he did here? What, what does white play here? What do you guys think? Any ideas? <clears throat> You think he traded this bishop? I mean, he could, because in theory, he's trading his bad bishop for black's good bishop. But... True. But, but that's opening up. Yeah. But still, uh, that, 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 rook. That, that, that would also help black in the sense that black is the cramped one, right? Yeah. So I don't think he would want to alleviate the crampness. So does he just do B5 to basically keep the position locked up? Uh, B5 will... Um, no, I think that's... No, I think you want to... Now that would shut this bishop out completely. So, so he does a, a different move. What do you think? <clears throat> Maybe C6 to try and get the D pawn, like a pass D pawn. Right, Bishop C6. Very nice move, right? So this is uh, planting the bishop on the C6 square. And of course, if he takes, now you have a beautiful um, passed pawn here, soon to be a connected or protected passed pawn. And now look, look at this this pawn on D. Um, this pawn on D uh, six is extremely weak and backwards, right? So, in progress. Yeah. so yeah. All right, let's go back. All right, so Bishop C six. So he doesn't take on C six. He goes Queen D eight, and. So now what would you do if you were if you were white here? White to move. B5. Okay, so B5 is an interesting move. Um, it does kind of lock up the position. Um, mm, yeah, that is an interesting move. Okay, that might yeah, not that be. Would, if they exchange bishops and still have the passed pawn. Yeah, you still have the passed pawn. So you you wanna you wanna keep a pawn uh, available to open up lines. So maybe you know, maybe you can do that with the A pawn. But yeah, so b5 is an interesting move. Uh, but what, what white chose to do is rook b1. So transfer the rook onto this, the, the file, which perhaps might be open uh, very soon, right? So rook b1, queen c7. Now he does b5, bishop takes, b takes, and uh, yeah. And the game, the game, uh, yeah, pretty much, I think, I think uh, the, the game. I mean, I mean, it, it stops, uh, I, I stopped following the game here, but here, 
like you, you can imagine the um, how moves might continue. Um, you know, maybe maybe bring the bring the rooks over here, double up here, push the push the pawn, break through, and look look at these look at these pieces. Look at Black's pieces. These rooks on the H file doubled up, <laughs> doing absolutely nothing right now. If this H file is not open, these rooks are completely useless, right? And look at these knights, completely blocked. Every single square is blocked except for the G7 square. And look at this knight on F8. Every single square is blocked. <laughs> I think this is just a beautiful position of showing how, you know, with a skillful use of pawn moves, you can render your opponent completely um, immobile and inert, right? Um, yeah, so I think this is just a great. So, so, so you know, there's a possible continuation maybe would be if A5, you know, to prevent prevent the, the white uh, the a pawn from pushing up and and uh, creating weakness on b6 you know a5 that creates a weakness on b um, on b b6 here anyway um, so then queen b2 yeah and then then it can't really be uh, avoided but but yeah yeah very interesting very interesting what do you guys think of this game any any thoughts very interesting <laughs> <laughs> like this is this is what you know the way you got to think whenever you have a position like this, that's very, you know, in the beginning it was like semi closed and now it's getting pretty close. Um, you know, you got to think differently, you know, and like, you know, strategic moving of the pieces this way where, you know, you focus your, your, your intensity on one area of the board and then your opponent does the exact same thing. But again, if you have more space and your opponent has less, then you can easily switch and maneuver. Whereas your opponent in this case cannot. Right. And uh, and so if you can if you can do a, a maneuver like that, uh, then it's very, a very simple way to win <laughs> and, and outsmart your opponent. Um, yeah. This knight never even got to H5, by the way. And eight, knight H5 would still be a good move, um, you know, pressuring the uh, the weak uh, F6 pawn here. So, but yeah. Yeah. Very nice game there. All right. So let's so we got a couple minutes left. So let's do let's do another puzzle. Why not? So this is a uh, this is an end game puzzle. So I, as I like these ones. All right. So let's go all the way back. Let's go all the way back and let's see here. All right. So we got e4, d5. We got center counter game. Queen takes knight there. Okay. Queen goes back. D4. All right. Uh, all right. So. <laughs> So one one thing I wouldn't do if I was black here would be e6. Why? And then followed by followed by c6. <laughs> Why is that no, no good? Blacks and the bishop. Yeah, this bishop is not happy now, right? So if you if if that's what you want to do as black, then might as well bring the bishop out to like say f5. Then you go um sorry, then you go, then you go e6 and c6 or maybe c5 even to challenge the center pawn uh but yeah bring the bishop out so you don't block it in so yeah no good bad bishop already all right develop okay all right Ooh, interesting okay uh all right all right Okay. Okay. He just drops a knight. All right. He just drops a knight. That was a that was a little mistake there. Just drops a knight. All right. Back. All right. Take. Take. Okay. Okay. Uh. All right, well, white has a better move than that, which is what? Anybody can tell me? Better move here for white. Bishop to h5. Uh, bishop to h5. Rook can take. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, rook and take. Yeah. So better move than queen h3. What about knight d6? Yeah, exactly. Knight d6. So, so the fork right here, right? Wins the exchange, which he does in the next move. Queen h3, h6, knight d6, 
Queen takes knight. Okay, so that just drops a whole bishop. I don't know why he would do that. Knight takes b7, rook e1. Okay, so now we got to be careful of back rank mate. So, yeah, we got to be extremely careful. Queen g4. Mm, I don't know about that one. That's a little bit, uh, a little bit, a little bit weird for me. Yeah, yeah. Um, what, what, what would you do in this case instead of Queen G four? Because that's still he has a back rank weakness here. What do you guys think? What would you do? Any ideas? Wait to move. Any ideas? What do you guys think? Maybe G3? What do you guys think? Make sense? G3, open up the queen, right? Protecting the, the rook, also giving an escape square for the king on G2. All right, so queen G4, rook takes F1, king takes queen A1, bishop D1. Yeah, this, this looks really weird to me. <laughs> Very weak back rank here. Um, all right, queen a6, bishop e2. All right, so he drops his knight on b7. All right, rook takes h6. Queen e7. Ooh. Why would he do that? Queen h5, now he just drops his rook here. <laughs> all right, well... He does it this way. Take, take, take. Okay, so now we're down to a king and pawn endgame. So now black is down one pawn. All right, so g4. Okay, so preventing both pawns from coming up. Okay, king g7, f4, king g6, f5. Mm, I don't know. I wouldn't allow the king to come like that. Um... Yeah, I don't know if I would allow the king that that much. Might have played h4. Yeah, maybe h4. Yeah, I wouldn't allow the king because this king is getting very active. So we got to, and, and white is not activating his king. It's just pushing pawns. So yeah, you got to make sure you activate your king definitely in the end game. So f5 check, king g5, h3, king h4. This king is just too active now. Um, king e3 finally activates his king. King f4, king h4, b4. A6, C3, H5. Okay, so here's the position. Here's the puzzle. White to move. Um, what is the strongest move for white here? Hmm. Isn't it G5? Yeah, I think so. Um, G5, F takes with check. Maybe King E5. And then if he pushes g4, f6, g3, f7, g2, promotion. So we we promote first. And yeah. Hmm. Okay. Um, all right. That looks like the best. Yeah, because taking the pawn would not suit us, I think right taking on h5 king takes h5 <clears throat> and we're going to lose this pawn due to uh the opposition or or you can say zugzwang also hmm. 
let's see. Okay, so so G takes H5, King takes H5. So now, um, yeah, yeah, we're gonna lose that pawn. So I think I think G5 is the best. All right, so let's say G5. Yeah, nice. Okay, takes on G5 with check. So, so where should we go here? What do you think? Where should the king move? Oh, back to F3. Back to F3? Hmm. Okay, so if we go to F3, then he pushes forward with check again. Right, but then the king can go to G2 and white. Uh, black okay. has a hard time getting the past pawn. G2, and then and then King G5, and he wins this pawn. Oh, wins the other pawn. And then yeah. the pawns are going to promote pretty easily together. So, so he else? has to go to E6 so he can get the queen first. Um, you mean E5, right? Right, E5. E5, yeah, I think so. I think so. So queen, king, E5. I think that's the best. Ooh, not the best. They don't like it. All right. Um, yeah, I think definitely not King F3 because of moving forward with check. So, so one of these, King E4 or King E3. I mean, they, they don't appear to be that different to me. Actually, no. King E3 would not be good. Why? Because he promotes with check. Right? So probably King E4 for that reason. Right? Let's see. No? Huh. All right. What do you guys think? King F3, King E3. <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys think well my original thing was to king f3 and that didn't seem all right, to work all right, all right let's see okay so let's see king f3 it goes check um no nah, see i don't think that works. but okay let's try it no all right so then it's king e3 oh my goodness ah interesting all right so let's go back. So why did he not push here? So he pushes. So I guess I guess uh, with king e3, he's still reserving the opportunity to come and catch the pawn. So, so if he pushes, then we push ours. He pushes. We push ours. And then if he pushes again, we can, we can come to f2, catch the pawn, and then we promote in the next move and win. Oh, wow. Everybody see that? That's that's pretty yeah. interesting. Make yeah. sense? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think you got to be a master to figure that out. <laughs> that's pretty. Yeah. That's pretty good. So King E three is really multi purpose move, right? So he's he's maintaining the possibility of catching the pawn, um, so that we can promote. Who we can be the only one to promote, right? So yeah. that's why. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, instead of playing King E three, imagine playing King F three. Um. So yeah, so king f3 and then and then g4 check, and then what would you do? Um you have to go back to king f4. King f4, and then and then you just push this again. And then what yeah, would you do? I know you'd have to go king f3 again, then king g5. King f3, then if you, you go king f3, then he then he brings the king down. So I think in that case, um in that case, black is gonna promote first, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. All right. So, all right. So let's go back. So King E3, King G4. Okay. Now best move here for white. Um, it has to go F6. Yeah, I think so. F6. Yeah. Yeah. Get the queen. All right. All right. What do you think? Yes. Make sense? I think so. Let's see. Yeah. Nice. Woo! And these king point king upon end games, they look they look deceptively simple. <laughs> Don't let them fool you. <laughs> um, so how many how many people here are gonna are gonna uh, join next semester again for the next session? I might. You might, yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I did. I put in I put in for the senior class, but uh, Evan emailed me back said I'm the only one signed up so far. Okay. So I'll probably be in this class again. Yeah, I mean, the intermediate classes is fine for you. No problem. Um, all right, cool. So, uh, yeah. And, and Chris, uh, are you going to join next semester? And Sean? I'm probably not going to join next semester. I'll definitely be back, but I may take a break. <laughs> all right. Sounds good. Sounds good. What, what about you, Chris? Uh, I'm not sure. Not sure? All right. All right. And, uh, yeah, so... 
so uh yeah you know i was thinking like i'm gonna teach the the next semester class i think for the beginner adult beginner anyway and i was thinking about covering the games uh some of the games from the um the world championship so i think that that'll be fun you know I'm, I'm sure they're gonna play some pretty uh pretty amazing games you know and like number one and like what number three ranked in the world something like that so should be interesting they're not they're they're pretty far from novices <laughs> like right. we probably won't understand what they're doing until <laughs> exactly. somebody else analyzes it <laughs> exactly um all right so good seeing you guys um happy thanksgiving and uh maybe we'll see you next next semester all right thank you very all much right. all right thank have, you. A, have, have a great night guys